Welcome, welcome to another Black History Month with Doing the Good Work, where we have special guests on, where we talk about Blackness, we talk about Black history, we just talk about Black people, because we are celebrating all month, right? We celebrate all year, but definitely all month, Black history. And so I am here with an amazing special guest. Uh, who is Black History herself, Miss Anne Phillips. How are you, my friend? Well, being that we're across the ponds here, it is freezing cold, but it's wonderful. Great. Tell folks where <laughs> you are. Tell folks where you are. I am just a little bit outside of London in the United Kingdom. And, you know, it's, 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 our little island is actually really beautiful. And okay. it's great, it's multicultural as well. Yeah, very diverse. So, so that means that when me and my wife come, we definitely got a tour guide, you know, somebody oh. will show us all the beauty. Absolutely. Oh. All the places, everything, where it all happened. Yep, definitely. I'm ready, I'm ready. So this is always a pleasure because our connection wasn't like just like we don't work together we are in whole different spheres of the country but we got connected through the breathe you community through eric thomas right and so if you want just talk about or pub a little bit some of the work that you have done the amazing work <laughs> that you have done with the breathe you community talk a little bit about that Breathe University is for the people, by the people, to transform the people. And truly, that's exactly what it does. And I joined Breathe University, it was January of 2020. That was the beginning of my journey. I literally thought, oh, you know, I'm going to give it about nine months, see, see how it works. Because I had never heard somebody who talks the way that I want to be talked to. Mm. And that was Eric and the whole squad. When I say they inspire you, they totally did. So about nine months in, it was like, but we don't have a call here in the UK. So, you know, we spoke to the leadership, did some beta testing. And by February, Breathe University has the UK call. And it's a privilege to, you know, be able to be part of that continually since that time of and we've just celebrated our first year anniversary and within that thank you within that i the growth that i feel that i have had has been exponential because the business has continued well, that way the <laughs> business has been growing just getting the course completely finalize and assess because it's it's done but i just want to make sure it's beta tested and everything as it goes out and up and in the end of the second quarter i will start writing the book hey. so really yay exactly so really and truly if if it wasn't for brief university if it wasn't for eric taking his place you kind of wonder sometimes, you know, what, what you would be doing, because over here, you know, we were very much into certain motivational speakers who wore suits and things like that, because we thought that was blue collar. That was the way to go. Right. And then someone like Eric just shows up and you're like, hold on, wait a minute. Seriously. Right. Someone can be just be so down to earth, speaking directly to you, and you you know he's speaking to your situation, and then everything changes. So Breathe University has definitely been able to open my eyes to new opportunities, advantages, and I don't have to think like a stereotypical black woman, right? Mm -hmm. And to be honest, you're you're thinking, hold on a second, what is no? But that's stereotypical in the eyes of others. Mm. here in the UK not me right. I'm unique and I know that and I'm a rare treasure so really and truly this queen operates above what other people are already thinking oh you shouldn't be doing that why not right who told you I shouldn't so brief gets you to think outside of the box outside I, I love the community one thing yeah. I will say about having a community of black folk black and brown folk mostly right who are able to allow you to be yourself. Absolutely. Right? It's a practice. 
you know, like we don't, I think for a lot of us, we oftentimes are trying not to fit into stereotypes. We're trying mm. not to be a threat to certain people. And it's important that we have space outside of family, outside of friends, but that's going to push you to achieve your goals, but through your own superpower, right? That's right. Through the lens in which that makes you great, the, the, through the strengths and abilities and capabilities that you have, right? That is the strength, I think, and the power of that community, of, of, any, of having a community like that, but that oh, community for sure. Definitely, um, because everybody... When you when everybody comes in, if you've already got your purpose and you're running with it, great, but they'll make it stronger. And if you haven't got your purpose, you're going to find your purpose and then you're going to start running in your lane. And the one thing that you will not do when you come in to breathe as you run in your purpose, you're not. Oh, they're running in theirs. Let me go faster. You're actually. Get, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. How can I help you to run in your lane? So everybody's adding value wherever they find. So they're planting seeds everywhere. Everybody wants to pull everybody else up. And the community is constantly lifting everybody up. There's, you know, leave no man behind. That is what literally you go forward, you reach one, you teach one, you constantly leave no one behind. Everybody is thought of. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't discriminate, right? I'm thankful to have a space that is that is like we don't discriminate and we are actively practicing that. Right? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter where you come from, what experiences you are experiencing. Even if your quarter one goal is to just show up to the call. That's right. That's right. Right. Even if your I will today is to just hear and speak on what you're dealing with. That's right. Absolutely. Because that is where you are, right? Yeah. That's it's consistency. Mm -hmm. They're building, they're building that consistency. They're building that accountability. And it is constant. And because of that consistency, you're gonna have the diligence. And as you build on the diligence that you have, you're getting stronger, becoming more confident, and you're you're doing what you are meant to be doing and Meant soon do. you start having the mentors and those people around you that you need to mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's all good yo so shout out to us Th thank you belinda amazing family right from my hometown michigan watching this if the folks who are watching this we are here with the amazing Anne phillips from the thank uk you, friend from the breathe you community and we're just talking black folk, right? We're talking blackness. We're talking just achieving our goals. And so thinking just, I want to, I want you to introduce something that you just felt like needs to be said, right? What do we need to be talking to folks in this moment, in this time about? Well, because you have black history in February, we don't have black history until October. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that me and, me and my elder sister were talking about was the fact that I had meant something to her regarding the family. And she was like, well, how do you know that? And I said, well, I sit and talk to my dad. And she's like, I talk to him as well. But I said, yeah, but me and him will go in politics, economics, we will, you know, football, we'll talk everything, right? So one day I sat down with him and I said, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna record this because I wanna know what it was like for you growing up. And there's a McKenna plantation, right? Uh, or an estate mm -hmm. that is on the island of Grenada now. Beautiful, you know, it's historical, the house is amazing and all the rest of it. But there used to be like some huts, some shelters, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, right? Yeah. And they Our were- houses. Yeah, outhouses, whatever you want to call them, but mm. they were, that was the family home for him. Mm. That was the family home for his mother. And her mother was actually a mistress to one of the people of the house. Yeah. So there was 
you know, a couple of children. And then my dad, my dad saw a lot of things because even though it's three generations for him, there was short space in between. There's not, you know, it's not like now, you know, you have really massive gaps and things, you know, it, it was shorter. So he saw a lot of things and he had a physically impaired brother who was slightly older than him. And he passed in his mid twenties because there was no care for him or anything like that. And so when I sat down with my dad and, you know, he's explaining all of this and, you know, I could see his heart about it. And so when I had traveled to another part of Grenada to speak to my mum, and she said, oh, we're going to go up and see, you know, your great gran and grandma and everything like that. Now, my grandmother, <laughs> oh, she was a she was an amazing woman. And she was she was tiny compared to everybody else in the family. She she was this tiny little woman. And she like you'd go up and, and see her. Now, she had bless her, her her toes had not developed. So people will understand it's like a web web foot where the toes are developed inside right and she used to love it when I visit because as a qualified masseur holistic therapist I would massage her feet and her ankles and stuff and, and we'd sit and we'd, while we're doing that she would talk she would tell me stories loved all that and then she would have a rest have her tea and then she would say I'm just going to get my stick and we'll go into the field now she would disappear. She'd come back. Her stick was never like a stick. Like, you think, I'm just going to get my walking stick. Mm -hmm. Her stick was this machete that was, she carried it like this. <laughs> it was massive. Because when she said, we're going into the field, because on the side of their house is, is a sugarcane field that just goes on. And when you go in, literally, I mean, I'm you know, above it, but it's a case of she would, I would have to literally hold her because I didn't want her to just suddenly disappear. You want some right one, sweetie? <laughs> and then like, you know, she expects us to sit and, and suck it and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So she would do that and she lived long, but my great grandmother, she didn't pass till she was about 105, wow. you know, long, yeah, longevity on our side of the family. That's the amazing. females you yeah, know what I'm saying it's all good but it's amazing how when you sit and you talk to them how the stories come out so when I was sitting with my father as I said I said so dad you know everybody's been talking about as as you said I think it was 1948 you know the whole wind rush thing and all that sort of stuff he went oh, the wind rush and I went, okay, so what was the stories? What happened? He said, oh, it had to, it, they docked in Holland and he came off because my father came as um, a missionary. My father would have been a pastor, right? So it's a case of he, he came off to, to go to the mission and the, the boat carried on and all the rest of it. And so he had to do what he did and he came, he came over a little while later. And him and my mom, you know, he he always said something that was really amazing and strong. And he said he had seen so much that he had decided that he was going to marry young and he would never have children out of wedlock. He had seen the example of others and he instilled that. And that, I mean, to this day, he will he will happily sit there and say, my three beautiful girls, I had you in this marriage. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing, you know, to hear your, your father say. And so he came and, you know, him and mum were very young. And there was a lot that happened and transpired with people attempting to get accommodation and the, the racism that they came across. But then once settled, my dad has an amazing, like, you know, talkative personality like myself he's a grounds crew hey. <laughs> and he you know he's able to talk to all sorts of people and recently he sat there and he was like well I've met so many politicians now I'm gonna start reading them off to you and I was just like it's like who hasn't he met 
Wow. Hasn't he met? He's gone out of his way to be able to meet varying people, shake, you know, Prince Charles's hand when they came to visit where he worked and things like this. And he will give you all of this. And so when I think it was 2000, a young boy was killed on a particular estate, Peckham, Peckham Park Estate, Peckham Wright, up that way, right? Damalola Taylor. The press were like, you know, another uh, gang related, poverty stricken area. And the young boys, like, you know, his life was taken and stuff like that. And dad, you know, as we said recently, he said, like, this, this whole thing, it has, it has never stopped. Mm -hmm. Because that was just another example because a few years before that it may have been 90 i can't remember 93 something like that yeah. stephen lawrence his story went around the world he was killed at a bus stop in bexley that's bexley kent but it's you know greater london so he was killed there and there's a placard and occasionally that gets defiled and it gets cleaned up and all this but the one thing my mum had always said about that particular murder was the fact that the reason it can't stay out of the press is his blood is crying out. Some, yeah, his grandparents really must have been praying for him. He must have given his life. And she said his blood is crying out. His, his blood is crying for justice. And truly, years and years later, the guys were caught and were tried and were imprisoned. And truly they did it, you mm -hmm. know? And it was like, wow, look at that, you know? But there's been many a time in our history here whereby we've had the Toxteff riots, we've had Bristol riots, there's been Cynthia, can't remember her surname. She she was killed and sparked another riot, but it's there's been so many incidences mm. of things, and you know when when you talk to like even up until only a few days ago, when I'm talking to dad and stuff, and it's just a case of the children, they're not listening, because there's you know you hear in the press a lot of the gun crime, a lot of the stabbings because we haven't had, and we're not openly having, the conversations of how come we are here. How come those children need to be in gangs to feel that that love oh, and support, love. inclusion that right. they're not the having. Of love, the false sense of support. Absolutely, right. absolutely, um, completely false. And know, so bounded by criminality or bounded by favors, bounded by um, allowing illegal opportunities to be your your guide, right? Absolutely. 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 And, but you see that a, um, but a lot of those kids, uh, oh, so many of them are super intelligent because they they don't a lot of them don't really realize it. You're entrepreneurs. You're running businesses. You actually know how to handle the finances. Many of them know how to code because they're hacking. And it's a case of, hold on a second, you do realize there's another way. And I've done youth prisons and adult prisons for the last 10, nearly 12 years, I think now, going in and utilizing the music, mind and well-being. And understanding that, like, we'll go in and like, okay, yeah. So you want to talk grime? Talk. <laughs> okay, spit your rhymes. Yeah. Right. But the one thing that you can't do, you can't defame anybody in the room. You, you've got to do it clean. Oh, gosh, that absolutely froze them because they, they're not sure what to be doing. How does she know in the first place? Well, you know what? We all come from somewhere. And basically, the street never leaves you. You just know how to utilize it when you, you're talking to them once they're inside. For some people, incarcerated, and but that was shortly after his mother passed and he was incarcerated. 
And to be honest, the six of them that used to run around together, his incarceration, he's the only one that's alive. But, and but, sometimes but, you kind of wonder, you, you know? I want, I want to come back a second, right? I want to fall back because I think some really important points was coming out of this, right? Mm. Uh, about the young people and the old people, right? There, there is this generational clash, right? That happens when we're talking about dealing with the workforce, dealing with racism, recognizing that our ancestors had to deal with harsher realities yes than what we might be dealing with in 2022 2000s perhaps even right yep. 90s 80s right like we there's harsher realities for for folks of color for black folks globally that our elders have lived and survived and many even thrived in yep what do you yep. think the disconnect really is between the older and the younger the more inf the, you know, the folks who have lived it and the folks who are trying to navigate it i think it can be due to the non-communication between those generations because you know for someone like myself i thrive on being able to talk to anybody who's older to find out how was that what was going on and there's so many people who are living who are like in their 60s 70s 80s 90s that you're learning from that you're continually learning from but the young ones want everything now i just sounded like my father did i just say that <laughs> you That's know that's a real That's, thing. That's a real thing. It really is. And I'm telling you, we, we need to be able to speak so that they can listen. And this is what I love. And I have to go back and say, this is what I love about Eric, Eric Dr. Eric Thomas. Dr. Thomas. He is, oh, you know, he is speaking to the youth in a way that they are listening. Mm-hmm but you've got to be able to speak to their pain point. Right. What is it that they need? Why do you need the validation of people, places, things? That means that there's something missing. Something but are you, exactly, and it's in, exactly what I was just literally pointing inside, intimacy. Go in to you and see what is going on. And that's where like the coaching, the therapy, the counseling, all of that come in because you need to be able to understand what is happening inside of you to be able to manifest what is inside of you. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to be taking on what the world is putting on you and then living by that standard, living by... The standard of, right, I need to be looking like I'm flossing and everything is just like happening for me, right? So right. every picture that every, like I walk past the car showroom, right, let me go and take like four or five pictures with some really nice cars, make it look like it's me, my life. No, you went into the shop and you tried on trainers and you took some pictures. Yeah, my latest, your latest what? You went into the shop and, you know, let's let's get real why why do you need that but we're not having the conversations so you're right there is a disconnect there is there is there's the the i mean because let, let's just be real like we're human we share more similarities than we do differences at the same time there was the instant gratification is almost like a trap yeah Yes. Right, it's almost like a trap. Are you? Uh oh, we there? We, we still there? You still there? Yeah, we're here. We're here. Okay, okay. The instant gratification is a trap because what thing have we really pushed ourselves to transform into that was instant? Mm. Mm. You know, nothing. 
nothing's instant. Nothing's instantaneous. Because even our growing and our development, <laughs> it's going to take time for you to get from zero to 21. And there's a lot to be learned in that time. But the microwave culture of now says, oh, yeah, that person was an overnight success. They weren't an overnight success. Most of them were grinding in the background. You just didn't see what was happening until they went above ground. Right. Are, you prepared to, are you prepared to put in the work? And most people in the microwave instant gratification culture are not prepared to do that. And that's where, you know what? How many of us can say we had an active grandparent in our lives? Mm. Not not too many there's a lot of people who still have a grandparent and god they're blessed to be able to have a grandparent because when you have a grandparent and then parent yourself that's, that's a different generation and learning things it is the gap uh -oh. from another generation you're breaking up you're breaking up you're breaking up man I'm uh oh no Oh, come on, back. Oh, Look at such that. Such a good Look point, Olivia. <laughs> what can I say? It's, yeah. it's a bringing of that. If you've got an active um, grandparent in your life, yeah. you know, to be, honest, to be honest, I would say, like, you, you have a child. You are the unit of the family. If you didn't have if you didn't have a grandparent, I'd say go and adopt one. <laughs> go find someone to adopt as your grandparent. Because right. seriously, the wealth of knowledge that people have to bring and it keeps people grounded and doesn't make you want some gratification. You wait, you will preserve, you will hold on. Uh oh. We, I caught some of that. I caught some of it. I think I most of it. Yeah, it's it's freezing on us. It's, it's freezing a little bit on us. But if you have a grandparent, right, what I'm hearing is that you get a chance to really hear what it means to live a full life. And, and when I, when, you know, I think about my grandma, you know, my grandma just passed away Labor Day weekend. So September of 2021, you know, thank you. And it's, it has been a trial for the family for sure. But the one thing that, well, not one thing, but many things that my grandma have taught me, one of them being, you show me your friends and I'll tell you your future. And that, that one has stuck with me for life because I think about, I had a couple of different type of friends when I think about my high school career and I have friends who are, you know, incarcerated or, you know, former friends, maybe I need to take the time to reconnect, right? Like to, to bring, you know, I'm a man now, I, I don't need to protect myself in that same way. Then I have friends who are going to college. Yeah. And it was a time where I had to choose, right? And, you know, coming coming back to that belonging, right? It's that sense of, you know, when you, when you have, when you're choosing things like criminality or things that are illegal that could potentially land you in jail for years and years, there's a survival mode that's happening. Yes. Right? There's a, yes. there's a survivorist mentality um, that is happening. And in many ways that goes internally, right? It's, I don't, maybe, I maybe didn't grow up in a house where I got the love that I needed, or I maybe got the love, but I didn't fully appreciate it. What I had in that space. I think about, you know, the self-esteem <coughs> that me. young people get from the streets, you know, mm -hmm. from feeling like they are understood by a person who might not be leading them in the right direction mm. and it is a you have to break yourself free when you are generationally bound to those options absolutely right? there's, a and liber there's a liberation that needs to happen definitely when you've got an, an example in a family of that level of criminality I recently saw there was a particular documentary and he's, he's an Asian guy 
and he is phenomenal right he was in the car and the it's it, it's a Maybach I think the car was it's a it's a this huge beautiful car really nice and he went to this house and he said well you know you guys know this isn't the, the kind of house that I would normally be at and <laughs> we're all like yeah and he said well the last time I was coming out of this house the police were arresting me mm. they were arresting me for drugs and all sorts of things that yeah I owned up to and I was doing and he said I got a prison sentence and I did that prison sentence and he said it was the best thing that happened to me mm. because it was the wake up call I needed he said I didn't know how to get out of the gang but by the time I got to the prison and started following the programs he understood this guy is one of the top estate agents what do you call it in america when the real house estate. is thank you right he is a real estate and he he doesn't do small deals one you know one of the smallest deals as he said that he did this year this year we're in 2022 this year february we're 2020 yeah five mil Whew. on a property so the commission on that is like 38 grand 40 grand something like that so that. you know <laughs> exactly and you know his 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 younger brother was selling one for seven and he's gonna make 73 grand i was like okay but you see he turned his life around yeah because he just took the best of what he is and what he understands to do and decided i'm not going back to that life and i'm going to show that life what is inside of me and there's something inside of me that is much more so truly, are we empowering the younger generation to tap into what is inside of them so that they can really understand the shoulders of the people that they are now standing on? The trials and tribulations, the, as I said to you, the Damalola Taylor, the uh, Stephen Lawrence, all of those people that have passed before, it's, they, they went through such adversity heartache lost their lives and that it wasn't for nothing it was to give us you know i'm talking as in even when it comes to slavery for us to have the freedom that we have now when it really comes to it there's there's something that really sits sits with me and every everybody knows this anybody who knows me knows this and truly if you're a woman in the uk if you are a black woman in the uk and you do not vote Stay silent, please. Mm. Don't don't sit there and be, oh, the government did it. No, there are people who fought for us to be able to vote, to be able to have the right to put our mark on the paper and decide who we want or who we don't want. I mean, oh, we can talk politics. Whew, I can go there, okay? That's we, my you, dad. Uh, we, we don't have to do it. <laughs> Because I want to stay in this same lane. I think it's important, you know, because we are in the instant gratification say, you know, phase. Like folks are like, I want sexy. I want it now, right? I want my career path to be sexy. I want it now. I want my money, my bank account to be sexy feeling, right? And I want it to be sexy right now, right? Yeah. Um, I want it to be full. I want it to be like, I, 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 I've already done the work. Why is it not happening, right? And so... This is what I, I always have a, a struggle with, right? Because my grandma was a sheriff, a sharecropper, right? Mm. She, you know, my grandfather, same. Like they didn't, they made nickels yeah. on, on the, you know, to, to live life, right? Yeah. We're not far away from, in America, right? Civil rights movement. We're not far. We're in a, I, I, what one would say even a, a movement of within the movement now, right? where we're, we're yeah. curating new leaders who want to activate and protest and, you know, cause, you know, some discomfort. Mm. But that's not the majority, right? That's never been the majority. And we have the folks who are sitting on the sideline just like asking why they, why they feel like their life is not this lavish luxury 
And I have a problem with that because it's like, what, what makes you entitled to that? That's right. When fathers, grandfathers, great, great grandfathers fought, I mean, dogs, police, mobs, yes. yeah. just to get an education, mm -hmm. just to go to a park, a public mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. right? Just to inhabit and be in in a job that will that will promote you, right? right? This is what they had to fight. And so I am always struggling with talking with young people about that. What what is your how do you frame that for them as far as their career and the troubles and the over the things they have to overcome and the obstacles that they have to face? How do you frame that for them? Well, most of most of the time when I'm going into the youth prison, which they've just recently closed in this particular area, we've gone in and we listen to their concerns. And their concern is always the same thing. There's never enough. All the ones that they're not overprivileged, you know, it wasn't like they had a silver spoon or anything to be living off. They always saw their parents in need of, I, you know, I need to be able to pay this bill. No, don't, don't go and have that second whatever because we, we haven't got enough food in the house. So when they're letting you know this and then how they were groomed into the gangs because of being given money and being bought food and things like that, here, take this, take this home give this to your mum, you know, she'll know what to do with it. And it's an envelope of money, right? Like say like a hundred pounds. The mother takes it off the child who's only like nine, 10 years old. The mother says nothing. She just pay her bill and then buy some shopping, but not doing anything with the child. So when you're listening to the children and, you know, they're giving you these hearts, deep heartfelt, this is their life stories. That's when I always ask the question when I've, I've been in many times, it's like, but what would you change? How would you change the system? You know, you hear again and again, I wish I had a father. Mm. I wish I had a father and it's what's your definition of a father oh someone who's around someone who would you know maybe walk me to school or you know take me to a lesson or you know pick me up and someone who would teach me stuff I wish I had a father mm. you know I wish I had you know mom, my mom had someone who who loved her instead of someone who beat her mm. and when you hear how they would change things it's like, well, uh, you know, mum, you know, she can't work because she's looking after us and so she's on benefits and this. And that. So you're, when you talk to the young ones, do you understand about that? Well, mum can't get a job because she hasn't got the time to go to the classes that she needs to to do what she needs to. And so they put it into their perspective so they start to understand because you've, you've put it back on them to see how they would change. So when you get to that point, it's then, okay, so you're here now. What do you think you can do right, right here, right now? Well, miss, <laughs> I always get a miss. I, I'm going to do my classes. I'm going to study. And then you're like, why? because I know if I study, I can get a good job. Mm. I can become something. Okay, so you let them start there. I don't, I don't have to be saying, okay, you can be an entrepreneur, you can do that. Yeah, I, I can tell you all of that, but let them have the belief in themselves that they can have that education. And as you know, your, your, your PhD level, it's very much a case of, right, they start where they are. Then I know in the States, I think it's your GED and then your degree and then your master's and then the PhD. But they start somewhere on the journey of belief 
that if they start this educational program, they're going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they do. And then they start to actually help their families. I've seen it. I've seen it for myself. They said, mm -hmm. oh, mom, I'm doing this. And did you know, I found out there is this course and you can do it online, right? But I know like we haven't got a computer, but you know, you can get help with that. And they're, they're teaching their, you know, their mom or, you know, their caregiver, how that they can move forward. But it's because you ask them, what would you do? Right. In the moment. And to change the system. Oh, well, the prime minister says, no, 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 no. Let's, let's not worry about that. What would you do right here, right now? And one, one young man said, all the chicken shops, I want them closed. And I was like, I know the type of chicken shops you mean. He's not talking to Chick-fil-A type, type shops. These are something else, right? Because a lot of those are the grooming grounds. Yeah. You know, you know it's I, interesting. I hear you saying, I hear you giving folks who might watch this or watch the replay or even young people who watch this permission to dream. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And I mean, we put, we, we have massive whiteboards, right? I'm just thinking of when we were up the road and it literally was the whole wall. And then you'd give pens and it's a case of, okay, if you can't, if you can't spell, don't worry about it. Draw, draw what you want. Some of oh, some graffiti artists were amazing at what they would draw, draw what you see. Who do, who do you see? years and years and, and you, you know you see all the cars and all this and all that but at least they were dreaming right. and then when you when you saw travel and you see you see like you know they they have the train they have the car and then they'll have the train and then they'll have an airplane okay where are you going oh i don't know the name of the places but i can draw like mountains and things like this or i've seen this place on the tv and i can't mm -hmm. remember where it is they're dreaming dreaming Dreams can start anything and change families. It has to start somewhere. The inner work has to be done. Find well, out what the pain point is, the trauma, change. Well, you know, when you talk about pain point, right? Like I, I, when I talk to black folk, oftentimes they can tell me all the things that they don't want. Mm. All the things that they, they, that they don't, aspire to be mm -hmm. all the things they don't care about mm. and one of the things i always try to do is like you know I, you know to get people to dream is just like what do you want and they like well i could tell you it better not look like no no nobody asked you what it shouldn't look like well i i know for a fact that i can't do no nobody ask you what skills you didn't have that's right it's all about what do you have now what do you want now now what do you want right now right and that that want can change yeah if you don't want something now tomorrow you won't be working towards it. that's right and it's the catalyst that ignites and it's the fuel for their fire and when, when they actually realize, ah, you see it in their eyes. So when you've gone back in like a month later and the first thing they want to they spot you, miss, oh, you'll never get, you know, last time, right? You were here and they just let you know exactly what's going in the last month. I've done this, 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 and this. And you can see the film. You can see change. They're not thinking, oh gosh, I've got another frizz in here. They're just working out how they're going to be executing their dream and their vision. Yeah, give them permission. Always are them. Don't assume that you have to put something on somebody or a whole generation. They have voices. Let them speak. Well, I'll be honest. I don't know if dreaming is enough to be a catalyst for many people. I don't know, because I think a lot of people have dreams, right? 
I believe that the 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 catalyst is the conviction. Yes. And less of the dream, right? So uh, the dream is like, these is the things that I want. It's big, it's vibration. Mm-hmm. It feels mm-hmm. scary, right? The conviction is the motivation to act on something that is scary, right? It's, it's when they have when they have that dream, and that dream is what they feel is tangible for themselves. That's when they go and execute. That come when they see you, and it's like, miss, miss, miss. Look what I've done. They're telling you how they've executed because they the the conviction has all, already been there because that the dream was the. Fe- it's connected to the conviction and then they've taken action and that action is now it's the train that's driving right because you know like i, I you know going back to the, the conviction piece it's yeah let's say you want a big house million dollar home that's the dream mm-hmm. well the conviction that gets you to push forward towards a million dollar home when you only make maybe a thousand dollars a month is I need to put my family into something bigger, right? That that could fit Mm -hmm. them. I need enough space for an ailing parent, grandparent, right? That Mm -hmm. can ensure that they have the space that they need, but also I have the space that I need, right? I need a million dollar home so that the legacy that I'm building for the children, they can see the work that had to be put in, right? They didn't, they don't have to see mom or dad go to the factory or, you know, right. they don't have to see mom or dad go into an industry that's losing momentum, mm-hmm. losing jobs, losing opportunity and come home and be stressed out, worried about being bill to bill or check to check or month to month. But the conviction piece, right? It's mm-hmm. it's it's the deeper meaning behind. Yes. The, like I, it's cool. You know, rich people do rich things. Like I, I ain't rich. Yeah, that's right. I ain't there, right? That's right. Uh, so there's a mentality, right? That I I just I'm not accustomed. I'm not here to tell rich people that they shouldn't have rich things. What I'm here, what I do believe is I, I'm here to do is say. To the average person, if you want to be rich, that it's okay to be convicted first. Mm. I think that is the train, right? Just like you said, the conviction is, should be already there. And then it will you- connect with it will it will connect when it's right. There's two ways of like putting this. When the light goes off right as in it's almost like a light bulb of bam the idea comes if there is enough conviction there yeah that will light Mm -hmm. the fuel of the dream because the dream will be like the carrot and the donkey it will always be in front but the conviction will always be inside Mm. because you're you use the metaphor of a house. You're the house. But what you did first, you didn't see the house. You decided to go and buy land. So you have to excavate the land. Is it strong and quality enough to be able to build this house? Right? So the excavation is okay. Yes, it is conviction. I can now build foundation. Mm-hmm. So you can start going down to build the foundation and that can be your education and all the things that you need to be doing so that you're ready to build up and out for what you need so that yeah there's so many ways that you have to be connected for the whole journey for the whole train to move Ooh. and but it starts with the foundation <laughs> foundation <laughs> it starts Ooh. with asking that generation what what do you want it's and it's not you know what it's not just the youth of today i'm talking anybody at any age what do you want Mm. are you working towards something some people get stuck some people get stuck on the 
you know, what is known as the treadmill of life, yeah. you know, rise up early in the morning, go to work, come home, watch some TV, have some dinner, go to bed. <laughs> 20 years later, they're like, what happened? Which is fine, right? Which is, which is fine. I, I, if that's I, what they want. I love that, like, I grew up with a, gen a generation of, you know, family leaders yeah. who could have been managers, right, for top, you know, for top corporations in the country, right, mm -hmm. UPS, Kiber Cookie Factory, right, like, could have been managers. Mm. They didn't want it, mm -hmm. right? They, they didn't want the extra respect. They didn't want the extra responsibility. They didn't want it, right? And they were clear, mm -hmm. right? They were clear that I am, I, I, my interest is in my family. Mm -hmm. And when I'm at work, I'm at work, right? Mm -hmm. I'm here to work. I'm not here to be best friends with people, right? Mm -hmm. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. I work, I go home, be my family, take care of my family. And I knew for me that that wasn't the life that I wanted to live. Mm -hmm. And so I know the foundation of what it takes to go to work in a factory, which is you need a high school degree. Yeah. Right. And for me, I felt like I wanted to lead. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be in front. I wanted to have say so. I didn't know where. I didn't know if I didn't know education was going to be my space, but I knew I wanted responsibility. So then therefore I knew I needed to go get a college degree. Yeah. I knew I needed to get a master's degree. Mm -hmm. Once I started teaching I got a chance to teach at the master's level I knew that it was then a calling for me to get a PhD because that's the foundation of being a faculty member at a university yeah right? absolutely and, and so I like how you talk about this idea of building the foundation after you've decided yes on what the yes. dream is the dream for me is teaching right mm -hmm. the, the dream for me is I don't think I, I aim to be the smartest, best diversity educator out there. I do aim to help diversity educators, leaders, educators make more money mm. using their skills in education. Mm. Right? It's because a, Yeah, because what the whole thing, bring it, bringing it back to like, you said about, and I'm just going to use the word blue collar, right? So really and truly, those people who really wanted to do that, they, they reared and raised the leaders that we have. So like yourself right now, the person that poured into you raised the leader knowing, okay, this child can be anything mm -hmm. he wants to be. And there you are, you, you've taken up the mantle and you've, you've gone with it. And they're satisfied with what they've done because that was their calling, was to work, but to raise the leader in you so that you could step out and become. This is why for me, Music Minds Wellbeing is all about coaching the creative mind. Mm. There are a lot of people, yeah, who are stuck with traumas past, uh, lived experiences of all sorts of things but you'll be surprised I've I've worked around creatives now when I think about it in communications for like what 20 years yeah. and truly truly I've seen all sorts of people you know you'll get presenters and things that amazing in front of the camera but boy they can be melancholy behind it and you Ooh. know it's, yep. yeah yep being able to coach people through, you know, where is exactly is that coming from? Because you need to be in alignment, you need to connect with who you are. So you're speaking to them the same way that you'd be speaking to the child. Speak mm. to their inner child, deal with that. And then we'll all move on from there. So oh. this, God, this has been phenomenal. <laughs> we, say, so leave us with, you know, leave us with a, a note right we've we've had one person consistently watching this this whole time like we had somebody on this thing ain't missed a beat wow right? thank you appreciate um, thank, you right thank you yeah, whoever you are appreciate I, you i love it right i i can't tell who it is either. 
but <laughs> I appreciate them. Leave us with something. Leave us with the word that you believe must be said as we wrap up, you know, Black History Month in the United States. But just in general, a, a word from an amazing Black woman. For Black History Month, anyone of any shade of color, step out and be who you are called to be, regardless of your age, regardless of your stage. You can do absolutely anything. Nothing is impossible. There is a call of God on your life. There is a calling that we know so deep that it has continual ripple effects hmm. in our lives. And others will say it to us on a regular basis, but yet many will not step into it. In this season, recognize it and start to become it. Hmm. I like that. Where can folks find and Phillips. Just Google me, Anne Phillips, MMW, and it will all come up. My website will be there. My everything of just like Anne Phillips. Yeah, space, space. <laughs> Anne Phillips, MMW. MMW. We, are, we are continuing this, right? We are going to continue these conversations. I am so, so happy to have you folks. Thank you for having out. me. Reach out to Anne. We're gonna talk, we're gonna learn more about Anne as we continue on the journey. Right, Women's History Month. We are gonna oh, have her right back here. Definitely. And this time, when when I come back for Women's History Month, one of the things that um, I want to talk about with women, I, I actually want to get inside because I'm a I'm a head case. I love neuroscience. You know, psychology, neuroscience, mental health. It's under one great big banner. And really and truly, women, how we think. Yeah, there, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some ways, guys. Okay, one thing, guys, you, you, you go into the, 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 the nothing happening zone, right? Mm. Like I was suddenly you've zoned out. What's happening there? <laughs> but us women, we want to talk. We want to do things. We want to. <laughs> there's a lot going on, right? Yeah. But it's just our differences of who we are, and once we know who we are. And then we can express who we are. We're good. We're in there. We're in there. No. And Phillips MMW Google everywhere. IG, right? tweets, uh, Facebook, TikTok. I'm out there. Come all find there, me. All that. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Love it. Da um, Mayweather, God bless you, Richly. Thank you so much for having me. Black History Month, I've been watching, has been awesome with you and your diversity keep on doing what you do keep on doing the good work doing the good work yeah always always right,